call this the Wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? Enough gawking. Come on, follow me. Huh? Over here. Wonder what he's 
up to? Where did she go? Ugh, how did we lose them? They were just here a second ago. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Ugh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. You were too careless. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. There's no need to thank me. I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. You really gave Paimon a scare, I'll hate them. We never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at Poor Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait, don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders. Oh, so you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Oh, right. Um, you do have a point. <laughs> I have no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. <sighs> and these days, you're more fascinating than anything the sages can offer. Hmm, not quite. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Unfortunately, I've run into some difficulties. Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you and why you're so interesting. The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the Divine Knowledge Capsule right in front of you. And upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed, and you were lost in thought for quite some time. To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? Oh, hey, Thum. You really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? So that's your answer. <laughs> well, I do work for the Academia after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close to your chest. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of... You two are also headed to the desert? That's right! We have the same plan as you! But we don't really have any concrete goals at the moment. Then I'd suggest starting with Aru Village. It's the largest settlement in the desert, so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else. Well, would you like to head there together? It's always better to travel with someone you know. Let's go!
Before us lies Aru Village, the safe haven of the desert folk. Whoa, this landscape is really something else. What a cool place! Let's go check it out! Unless my memory fails me, we have barely spoken two words to each other before now at the Academia. Would you care to enlighten me as to when and how I invited the General Mahamatra's wrath? Oh, Haytham, do not think you can escape my judgment just because you managed to escape my attack. <laughs> judgment? So that's how you'd characterize your actions here, is it? Or would elimination perhaps be a more accurate description? Had I used my full strength, not even this traveler would have been able to stop me. Though styled like an assassination, I sought only to ensure that my target would be unable to flee or resist. Standard practice for the Matra, as well you know. Seemed to me more like your own personal touch. Uh, who, who is that, Al Haytham? Did you call him General Mahamatra? Yes. General Mahamatra Sino, head of all the Matra at the Academia. He's a formidable hunter, and the ultimate nightmare for any who have committed academic crimes. You seem to have placed a lot of trust in Al Haytham, to the point of blocking an attack for him. If I were you, I'd never choose to side with him. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. I have been pursuing this scribe for a long time. I urge you, stand back and do not seek to defend him any longer. Otherwise, there will be consequences. Has Al Haytham done something wrong? Hyman doesn't think he's as bad as you've made him out to be. I won't waste my breath explaining things. Al Haytham, I saw it during our fight. Take it out. The divine knowledge capsule you're hiding on your person. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Hmm. <laughs> Very perceptive of you. Nothing escapes a mantra's senses. Wait! The divine knowledge capsule? Didn't it fall into the mantra's hands in Port Ormos? No wonder you speak with such confidence, Sino. But I must admit, I'm very curious. What does this capsule mean to you? And why, as General Mahamatra of the Academia, are you all alone in the desert? As far as I'm aware, the other Matra have been speculating about your disappearance. Have you been given a mission that's, let's say, morally dubious? If I was the real target of your mission, what was stopping you from simply using your authority and resources to judge me within the walls of the Academia? <clears throat> I should have known you'd be difficult to deal with. You two! Ugh. What should we do, Traveler? Paimon feels like we can't trust either of them! Ahem. <clears throat> well, look at you two, acting all tough and self-righteous over there. Wait! You gotta help us out here, otherwise these two are gonna start fighting again! Yeah, sure looks that way. Two giants from the Academia duking it out once and for all. Not something you get to see every day, that's for sure. Listen, 
I know you academic types love to fill up your big brains with self-righteous morality and lord your empty rules and virtues over each other. But how dare you bring your petty disputes into the safe haven of Aru Village? It seems like someone's gonna have to beat some sense into your thick skulls until you finally learn to respect these grounds. <sighs> Either of you hear a word I just said? Ooh, what's going on? The wind's so strong! Is this a sandstorm? Paimon's gonna get blown away! Another sandstorm? What's up with these recently? Hey! All of you, over here, quickly! We have to take cover! Someone's calling for us! Oh, this wind is too strong! Let's get over there! That sounded like Candace. Ugh, come on, you two! Jeez, are all of you academia folks such hard work? Move it! All right, stop yelling. <laughs> Well, this is pretty awkward. <laughs> hey, wanna play sardines with three people who wanna tear each other limb from limb? <laughs> sure, why not? Sounds fun. Uh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can hardly keep floating anymore. My sincere apologies, everyone. This is the home of our village chief. I will have to ask you to make do with this small room until the sandstorm dies down. Please, let me introduce myself. I am Candace, protector of Aru Village. Ah, our savior has come at last! Nice to meet you, Candace. The name's Paimon. Thank you so much for helping us. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. It's only right to help each other when the weather gets rough. Wow, she's so gentle and caring, like a nice older sister. I'm like those guys over there. All right, now that we're all better acquainted, we should return to the topic at hand. As a guardian charged with the responsibility to protect my fellow villagers from harm, I was observing your conflict from afar, even before the sandstorm started. And now that you have set foot within our village itself, it is all the more my responsibility to make absolutely sure that you pose no threat whatsoever to us. So please, have an honest and sincere conversation with one another and put your hostile feelings to rest. If anyone dares to start anything again while they are under this roof, I will not hesitate to send them out for some quality time with the creatures of the sandstorm. Oh! Uh, on second thought, Paimon may have misjudged Candace's character. Hmm. <laughs> and that goes for you too, Miss Dia. Do I make myself clear? <sighs> All right, we got it, Candace. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, which of you will begin? I was supposed to be a mediator, but uh, I might have gotten a little too involved just now. Anyway, one of those two should probably start talking. Wait, that was you trying to be a mediator? <sighs> I have nothing to hide, so there's no shame in explaining myself. While all Haytham wasn't wrong about the other Matra not knowing my whereabouts, it's not because I've been assigned a morally dubious mission. Rather, I've chosen to exile myself. Huh? Exile yourself? A little while ago, 
I discovered that there was data missing in the academia's project planning and development files. What little they did report clearly did not match the project's actual progress. As General Mahamatra, I had the responsibility and authority to request an audit. However, to my surprise, the person responsible for the erroneous data was none other than Grand Sage Azar himself. I tried to investigate the issue myself before submitting a formal audit request, but I soon found that all leads and potential pieces of incriminating evidence were carefully concealed from me. I began to realize that they were cautious of me from the very beginning. Unsurprisingly, the Grand Sage rejected my audit request as soon as the submission reached his desk. He even said to me, The power of the General Mahamatra is granted by the Sages. You have no right to judge us. Hmm. So they really are up to no good. I realized then that to the Grand Sage, the Matra are nothing more than tools for the Sages to assert and maintain their control over knowledge. The vows that we took, the principles that we strive to uphold, they are meaningless to the academia of today. I believed it would be wise to flee the academia before the sages had a chance to take action against me. This way, they can no longer see nor predict my actions. I will never give up on this investigation. There's no need for someone else to give me power or authority. Once I find the truth, I will administer judgment by my own name. Sino seems to have the same goal as us. We're all investigating the sages. Plus, now that he's no longer the General Mahamatra, he somehow feels a lot less scary. Well, Sino, if that's your story, then why did you see all Haytham as a target? When I was investigating the matter in the academia, I overheard a conversation between all Haytham and a sage. The sages asked you to investigate a blonde-haired traveler. Do you dispute this, all Haytham? Uh, what? Like many parts of the project, this assignment was undocumented. Now throw in your suspicious behavior with the Divine Knowledge Capsule, and I think we deserve an explanation. Hmm. Yes. I was indeed tasked with investigating the Traveler. I'll hate them! After all, the promised reward was so great that hardly any scholar could have refused. The Sage told me, Once you've completed this assignment, I can give you a glimpse of divine knowledge. A most enticing offer. Unfortunately, those academics don't know me at all. Their words contain one key piece of information. Namely, that divine knowledge indeed exists. That gave me all I needed to know. From my perspective, the sages are far from trustworthy. Think about it. Isn't it a little strange they're so willing to share divine knowledge with anyone, even as a reward? So, I began my own investigation following the lead of the divine knowledge capsule. In the end, I realized my wisdom in committing to this rather than collaborating with the sages. Had I been less guarded, I probably would have ended up like that Einal Ahmar mercenary, incapable of remaining sane for long enough to hold a conversation. You mean that the sages originally planned to dispose of you using one of those capsules that drive people insane? I'd already given up on the assignment by then. I only told the Academia I was waiting in Port Ormos for you to appear so they wouldn't suspect anything. So it came as quite a surprise when I encountered my erstwhile target while investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Criminals do love to talk about coincidences. Even though I ran into the Traveler by chance, I had no intention of providing assistance to the Academia. Also, you should remember, you were the ones who decided to follow me and strike up a conversation after I left that tavern. That's true. Oh, Haytham helped us out at Caravan Rebot as well. Maybe he's telling the truth. 
I'm willing to apologize if that's worth anything to you. I took the divine knowledge capsule behind your back because I judged its existence to be a significant risk. I felt that it would be best for no one to interact with it before it had been properly studied. <laughs> After all, curiosity often proves to be the most dangerous thing in this land. You should be well aware, Scribe Al-Haytham, that curiosity can also lead you to danger and suspicion. Answer me this. Did the sages share any information about their project with you? Have I not made myself clear? You and I are both distrusted by the academia. Do you really think they would tell me anything? Fine. Although you haven't completely proven your innocence, I won't regard you as an enemy, for now. As you wish. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad to see you two clearing up your misunderstandings. And now you, Dia. I believe it's your turn. Oh, sorry. Whatever the boys were talking about must have been so boring that I spaced out. Ahem. <clears throat> My situation is pretty straightforward. My employer, Dunyarzad of the Homiyani family, is friends with the Traveler and is currently recovering from her illness at home. I had nothing going on, so I decided to return to Aru village for a visit. I was actually looking forward to a pretty exciting time getting back together with everyone here. But then I saw these two random guys in the middle of a pointless argument. It ticked me off, and things went downhill from there. Is that all? Well... I will admit that definitely sounds like your style. In that case, welcome back, dear. That's more like it. I missed you all so much, Candace. Whoa! What was that sound? No need to worry. Now that you're no longer at each other's throats, please make yourselves at home. I'll take a quick trip outside to clear out some of those creatures in the sandstorm. C creatures? Fighting in a sandstorm is not for the faint-hearted. Anyone without extensive training in these conditions is at a disadvantage. You needn't worry. Yeah, just leave them to Candace. <laughs> Don't worry, she's as tough as they come. The wind's died down. That means the sandstorm's over, right? Candace still isn't back yet, though. Is she all right? Maybe we should go out and check on her. When you put it that way, even I'm starting to feel a little worried. All right, let's go. We've been here long enough, and the boys are as chatty as the floor.
anything else more interesting to do? of joy. They just keep coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. Hey! Here comes another wave! <laughs> Leave this round to us. I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you then. I'll be sure to put on a good show. <laughs> Let's go! Solidify! Boba, get them! Let's light it up! Off we go! Yeah! 
just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. Well fought, everyone. No injuries, I hope. Huh? Who are you? Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. I am the chief of Aru Village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. Sir, I am also originally from the desert, but I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? I can't say they've always been common, uh, but recently the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes, uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermensol. Hmm. Another effect of Ermensol's withering. So, Ermensol's withering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Ermensol. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Ermensoul's present state. Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village keeper? Who are they? Village guards like Candace? Test your curiosity, no no bounds. Village Keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars exiled here by the Academia. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity after a period of training in the Avidia Forest. The Academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. Mock me if you will. But if you are guilty, I will eliminate you regardless of my position or identity. Oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. I'll be grateful for the assistance. <laughs> no doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far.
although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru Village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru Village greatly resented having to take in the mad scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, the people of Aru Village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness, and began to refer to them as the village keepers. A soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm. What do you make of it, Traveler? Paimon thinks so too. Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the mad scholars continued to wear their Akasha terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. So, what do you make of the story? Really? Master Lord Kusanali. Hmm. What? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon, is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Ruka Devata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Nahida definitely exists! She's a... how should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise! Even if she says weird stuff sometimes. I've spent many years interrogating criminals, so I can easily tell when someone is lying. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes... I've never seen that from a liar. You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? To think, our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. All right, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. But easier said than done, especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. 
maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Excuse me, are you here to help me find my grandpa? Huh? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. My name is Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. <sighs> the person you're referring to is not a local. Yet you are. Why do you call him Grandpa? Grandpa is just Grandpa. He's my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I want to find my Grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah, so you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was. But I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa! Oh, Hazel wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid! All he wants is to find his grandpa! Let's find a way to help him! Sorry, I was only listening in because I wanted to know where Grandpa went. Honest, if you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. All the matra are like? Ah, oh, you're back already. We just wanted to confirm something with you. Do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> I had a feeling he'd go looking for you. Huh? You knew this would happen? Yes. Although he tried his best to stay hidden, I still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window. He really wants to get his grandfather back. Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft-mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his grandpa again, only to realize his grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his grandpa was able to find peace and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, want me to take you somewhere fun, or... Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? 
All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. Hmm. Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Sino? No, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Esau's behalf, Sino. Hey, Isak! Oh, it's you guys! We've cleared everything up! Let's go find your grandpa! Really? Wow! Thank you so much! Yeah! Alright. Let's ask the local residents some questions first.
dollars, Wink? You mean the village keepers? Oh, let me think. When I was eating dinner the other day, I saw one of them by the side of the road, muttering away and eating mushrooms and tree roots. They shouldn't go around eating that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Um, did you notice anything else? Anything else? Hmm. No, I think that's all I have to tell you. Sorry. <laughs> the scholars that have gone missing, have you seen them? <gasps> Those eyes. Those fierce eyes. You, you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. Right. You were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. But honestly, I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. Do you also think Grandpa and the others are good people? Grandpa? Oh, hello there. It's little Isak. You mean that nice man who looks like your grandpa's long-lost twin, right? <laughs> he was actually the one who protected my house. I saw it with my own eyes. He happened to be staying near my house that day and was doing something with his hands on the ground. It still feels pretty surreal now that I think back on it. Did someone teach them how to do that? Well, whatever the case, I'll always be thankful to him and whoever taught him to look out for others. I'm pretty sure that if I ever went mad, I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. Gotcha! Thank you!
Have you seen my grandpa recently? You know, the one who likes to sit and space out near the village entrance. Oh, well, if it isn't Isak. Oh, your grandpa, huh? Hmm, it's been a while. The last time I saw him, he was pacing out by the road as usual. I went and asked him if he'd like any of the food I had prepared, despite my wife's protests. Like many people, she's really quite terrified of them. <sighs> and speaking of my wife, she's still always complaining about how I don't make enough mora. It might explain why she's always mad at me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for taking care of him. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing. Hey, you're looking for him, right? Did he go for a walk and get lost? Yeah. Ooh, that's no good. Well, once you found him, come by my place again and I'll cook a little something for the both of you. I've known you since you were very young, so as far as I'm concerned, you're family. Please feel free to come by any time. Wow, what a nice guy! Okay, thank you, sir. Huh? Don't say anything for now. <sighs> Isak, stay here. Let's head over there. Stay quiet as you move. Listen, see if you can make out what they're saying. Have you heard? The mighty King Deshret, the sovereign of our faith, will soon return to this world. Yes, of course I have. King Deshret is the one and only true ruler of this land. I've never believed in any other gods. Still, you say he's coming back, but it sure doesn't feel like life's about to change around here anytime soon. What's your proof? Haven't you noticed? The village has been getting more deranged scholars than ever. Delavar was saying that many people also went insane just before the fall of King Deshret's civilization in ancient times. We don't quite know why, but it seems like there's some sort of connection between insanity and King Deshret. Isn't it a sign of King Deshret's power that all the mad scholars have disappeared? If you ask me, they must have been chosen as the final sacrifice for King Deshret's resurrection. Huh. Now that you say it, that does make some sense. <laughs> Does this mean our lives are finally going to take a turn for the better? Exactly. Those city folks will get what's coming to them. Now, repeat everything you've just said from the very beginning. Huh? H who are you? Uh, where did you come from? My patience is running thin. You heard what I asked. Bro, this guy's something else. Just look at his eyes. One wrong move, and he's gonna flay us alive. Let's not get on his bad side, okay? I am no match for this guy. Oh, uh, okay, good sir. W what is it you would like to know? Tell me about King Deshret's resurrection. Well, I... I only know a few things from hearsay. I went for a drink the other day and heard others talking about a rumor that the madmen will disappear and that King Deshret will return to this land. I'm not making this up, I swear! <sighs> hey, go on, keep talking. It's true, it's all true, sir. We desert folk have had more than enough of those people at the academia. They keep sending us all their mad scholars and won't let us have a good life. Would you want to live like this if you were in our place? The radicals were even more thrilled than me when they heard the news. We're all praying for King Deshret's speedy return. Delavar also said that once King Deshret returns to our side, it's only a matter of time before we conquer the land on the other side of the wall. 
They're all willing to serve under King Deshret and fight for a share of the glory. Is that so? Uh, seems like he still wants to know more. Keep talking. Ah, uh, got it. I, uh, at first, I told myself it was just the drink talking. But then all the mad scholars vanished without a trace, just as the rumors said. Please don't beat me up just for mentioning these rumors. I if I'm guilty, then everyone else around here is also guilty. I'm just saying what the others said. The people here really like King Deshret, but dislike the Dendro Archon. Where is this radical person you talked about? I haven't run into him over the past few days, so he probably hasn't been around the village. What about you, man? Have you seen him at all? No, uh, not at all. We wouldn't dare lie to you. He's really not here right now. Sounds like you're not too close with the radicals. Uh, no, uh, of course not. All we know are their names. I have many ways to stop you from talking. And many others to stop you from sending warning messages. So you'd best just stay home and hope I don't hear of you trying to contact anybody. Don't do anything until I've gotten to the bottom of this. Try something foolish, and even Candace won't be able to protect you. Yes, yes, got it. We'll do just as you say. <gasps> that scared Paimon half to death. Sino is pretty terrifying. <laughs> he didn't try to reassure us at all. It's like he's used to hearing that. Oh, Paimon bets lots of people have told him that before. I heard that. <laughs> Sorry. It's part of being a Matra. The rumor we heard just now seems like a strong lead. But we need to check a few more places. Very well. Isaac! Uh, I'm here! Where's your grandpa's house? Well, I can take you there. Just follow me! Join the Aramites and embrace a wonderful new life. Grandpa? Oh, he likes to be alone. Uh, sometimes he stares at the sky in a daze, and other times he just pokes at the ground with his fingers. Every now and then, he yells out at the top of his lungs, so a lot of people are really scared of him. But he's a good person, really. I know he is. I swear, he, he's just like my real grandpa. Where Grandpa usually stays. There sure isn't much here. No. Incense? Uh, please don't say it's the same one as before. But are you okay? Are you getting dizzy or need to lie down? There's a scent that you can sense, but I can't. A certain traveler here once passed out from that smell. Thankfully, Tainari saved the day! And then he gave us a long lecture to explain all about how it worked. So, you know Tainari? Huh? You know him too? Are you two friends? Yes. Hmm. Now that I concentrate, I can also make up the scent of incense. Wait, surely Tainari didn't lecture you too? No, no need. Did you first encounter this scent at Tainari's house? In the forest. From a scholar.
Please come home, Grandpa. Take a look right here. Uh, Paima doesn't see anything. Although the traces have been completely buried in the sand, there are footprints here. From the size and shape, they belong to an adult male. This pattern is a common one from this area. Local shoes. This was probably someone from the village. The scent is quite faint but still extant. The footprints head in that direction. But who would come looking for Grandpa? He doesn't have any friends. We'd have to ask whoever lured him away with the incense. Huh? So you can lure someone away with just a scent? Hey! What's wrong with liking good food? Everyone's got some they love in life? Exactly. Most scholars are fond of incense, since the smell supposedly helps them clear their minds and discover new knowledge. Even deep within the clutches of madness, they still yearn for their knowledge-seeking days, and will follow the scent whenever it presents itself. No, Grandpa. So, someone's taking advantage of their weakness? Huh. Still... Why would anyone want to abduct all the scholars? Are the rumors really true? Could the disappearance of all the mad scholars have something to do with the radicals? It's highly likely. Please, you have to save my grandpa. Grandpa's never done anything wrong. Please help him. Sounds like we'd better help get him back. Don't you worry, Isak. We won't let whoever took him get away with it. Let's head to Aru Village and inform Candace and the others about what we learned here. After that, we'll set off to find the scholars. darker fabric definitely looks a lot better. That'd be my choice, too. We're back, Candace! We've got a lot to tell you! Ah, welcome back. <laughs> Sounds like everyone's friends already. Oh, Dia's here, too! You bet. So, everything goes smoothly? Reasonably. Hmm? I'll hate them didn't go with you? We haven't seen him at all. Huh. I saw him around the village entrance earlier and figured he was investigating with you. I guess he must have gone off on his own. Did you find out anything useful? I see. So someone used a kind of incense to leave the exiled scholars away from the village. The resurrection of King Deshret? First I've heard of it. Far as I know, the kind of incense you just mentioned is only popular beyond the wall. Scholars are fond of it, but as you can see, there aren't many scholars still studying around these parts. No seller would be able to make a profit here. Not to mention making incense is a labor-intensive process. You won't see anybody in the desert with the patience to make or sell something that requires that kind of effort. It seems someone from beyond the wall must have been supporting this. Makes sense. Hmm. So what should we do then? Do we go back to the academia and search for leads there? If it was any other day, that would be your next logical step. But today, you've got me on your team, so you get an extra tip. Didn't you say that the villager got his news from the tavern? 
Well, I also like to drink at the tavern, so I know a thing or two about these radicals he mentioned. If Paimon remembers correctly, the leader of the radicals is some guy called Delavar. Ah, yeah. Delavar, the scar-riddled bandit, Enger, the wide-eyed butcher, and Jabari, the ducktail bearded crook. The whole lot of them are known around these parts. These guys have one thing in common, and that's being broke. The rougher life gets, the more they want to believe in King Deshred. Way they see it, King Deshred's resurrection is their only chance at overthrowing the Academia. Throwing all of Sumeru into chaos is the only way to change the way of life here in the desert. Anyway, that's my guess why they've chosen to become radicals. Tia! You're amazing! You really know this place inside and out! <laughs> no Merc can afford to slack off on gathering intelligence. Every more I've spent in the tavern has been a valuable investment. Let's head out. Now hold on, you're staying right here, Sino. Why? Aru Village is not a big place. Outsiders stand out here like a sore thumb. I'd bet word about you has already gotten out. The desert is unforgiving, so the way of life here is also a lot tougher than on the outside of the wall. You survive on making connections out here. T compared to you, mercs like me are just third-rate amateurs. I've got no actual fighting skills to speak of. But that also makes it a whole lot easier for me to gain the locals' trust. I need to go around and ask some questions, but it'll be difficult if you're with me. <sighs> Fine. Good, then we've got a plan. The Traveler and Paimon will go to Caravan Rebot with me and we'll try our best to figure out where the Mad Scholars have been taken. Sino, you'll have to stay in the village and continue investigating on your own. All right, sounds like a plan. Sino, please don't take offense. I'm sure Dia just wants to help everyone solve their problem as quickly as possible. That's why she can be so straightforward at times. I don't mind. Ah, I see. Well, from the way you were staring out into the distance, I thought you might have been mulling over Dia's words. <sighs> no. I'm used to being treated that way. It's natural to fear strength. I take no objection to it. Sounds like you're starting to get familiar with the area. Paimon's amazed every time we see the wall of Samiel. How can a wall this tall even exist? It's almost unreal. I know what you mean. I had the same question every time I walked this way when I was a kid. Also, why is this high wall here? And can a wall really block sandstorms? It was only after I grew up that I realized the wall of Samiel isn't just there to keep out the sandstorms. It serves a more important purpose, keeping out people like us. Sumeru is run by wise and mighty sages. To them, 
Us desert dwellers are nothing but tools that can be used and discarded at their whim. We're cheap labor, like livestock, but easier to control. Nothing more. Even if a child from the desert got the chance to obtain an Akasha terminal, almost all their requests for knowledge would be denied. The academia believes we're underserving. Geniuses like Sataria are one in a million. The other children never get a single chance to try and rewrite their fate, even though the academia knows very well that we're humans, just as they are. That's terrible! I would tear down this wall with my own hands if I could. No, not at all. This place just gets me thinking, that's all. Besides, we're here to procure information, aren't we? Yep, we gotta catch those- Shh! Caravan Rebot is crawling with people, so be careful what you say. We don't want anyone to find out what we're here for. Our mission started the moment we arrived here. Let's go check out the tavern, maybe we'll find someone I know. Just our luck. None of them are here today. You mean, you don't see anyone you know? Dia, is that you? <laughs> what a coincidence. You here for a drink too? Hmm? Zaki? <laughs> Finally, a friendly face. Oh, and who do you have with you here? Guests from another land? Hello, hello. I'm Zaki. Dia's, uh, how would you put it? Drinking buddy? <laughs> We've had drinks together a few times. You could say we go back a ways. Anyway, as far as my friends here, they aren't too shabby, are they? You rarely see any outlanders so friendly and respectful nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than those people on the other side of the wall. So, Dia. Are you looking for someone? Yeah. Have you seen Enger, Delavar, or Jabari recently? Of course I have. Matter of fact, we were all here drinking together just a few days ago. I've got a spice trading deal from another nation. I thought maybe Delavar and his friends might be interested. Know where I could find him? Ah, how thoughtful of you. Then I assume you also know that Delavar's been having a hard time making ends meet these days, so you came here to help him out? Hey, keep it down. Let's just say I prefer to keep this deal a secret. Y'all at Caravan Rebot are like family. If there's more to be made, why not do it together? Besides, Delavar and his friends have muscle. They'd be a good fit for escorting the goods. <laughs> yes, how considerate of you. Delavar's my friend, too, so of course I can take you to him. Come with me. there yet? Yep. This is the place. This place is practically deserted. What are they doing in a place like this? <laughs> Why don't you take a guess? Go on. A wild stab in the dark. <laughs> You're like lambs to the slaughter. What's this all about, Zaki? Come on, Dia. 
You really think we didn't hear about what you said back in Aru village? The boys have kept a close eye on you from the moment you set foot there. Not only do I know that you're looking for Delavar, I also know that you've teamed up with people from the Academia to look for the missing scholars. So, you've been watching us from the very beginning? Uh-oh. I'm a new leaving Sino behind was a mistake! <laughs> and you left the strongest one in the village, didn't you? Who do you think you are? You really thought we'd fall for your little business deal nonsense? So you and Delavar have been partners all along. <laughs> Dia, I guess it's only natural for a traveling mercenary like you to be out of the loop. Those of us who hang around the tavern have stronger bonds than you think. But you got one thing right. We're all looking forward to an uprising in Sumeru. There's nothing more we'd like to see than the desert folk overthrowing the Academia. If that's the case, then I'm sure Delavar wouldn't miss a second of it. I'll be honest with you, if it weren't for what you said in the village, your little monologue about the Wall of Samuel would have convinced me that you're one of us. Delavar. And Enger, you're here too, huh? Long time no see, Miss Mercenary. You should have known the traitors are what us followers of King Deshret despise the most. Dia, I thought that you, a fellow desert dweller, would understand why King Deshret is greater than the Dendro Archon. Little did I know, you don't deserve to join us. <laughs> yeah, gee, what a missed opportunity. Adopting radical views and kidnapping innocent scholars, all because of some baseless rumors. <laughs> Anything else I'm missing out on? See? There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. As long as there's a profit to be made, anyone can become my friend. Enough talking! Get him! <laughs> Just as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, Traveler. Following orders. New punching bag. Gather! How could you? So, what do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? How did you say it? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. I'm guessing your informant told you that I'm just an incompetent merc with no real fighting skills, correct? I mean, that is what I said after all. And of course you would believe everything he reported. The only thing you know about me is that I'm a mercenary, but you've never seen me in action. Even though you heard we went to handle monsters together, you believed that Candace was the only one doing all the real fighting. That so-called flame mane is just a fraud. She admitted it herself. She just uses her connections to gain the trust of others. That's what you thought, right? Ugh. You lied in the village because you figured that we'd have people watching you. And you were stupid enough to fall for it. I figured as much the first time we drank together. You all thought you were so smart. Pathetic. Okay, that should be all of them. Whoa! So you've been planning this since we were in Aru Village? No task can be done without preparation. I just happened to notice a couple suspicious looking people while you were out investigating. But instead of catching them right away, you let them report back! 
Those two who were snooping around were just a couple small fries. If we want to get the real catch, we have to be patient and give it some time. Oh, you mean the funny names she mentioned back in Uncle Ampu's house? The Wide-Eyed Butcher, Scarbrittle Bandit, uh, um, Paimon can't remember them all. That's just a bunch of drunk talk. Enger and Delavar like to talk themselves up when they're drinking. Enger, the Wide-Eyed Butcher, and Delavar, the Scar-Riddled Bandit, are the nicknames they came up with for themselves. Alcohol has a way of making people share what they really think. So Enger and Delavar are always rambling in the tavern about how King Deshred is a superior deity. What about Zaki? He's just a numbskull who fell right into our trap. Zaki was probably the best hidden of them all. My initial plan was to find Delavar first, and then try to track him down. That's what you wanted to ask when we were at Uncle Anpu's house, right? Jabari is one of the villagers you talked to. You know, the one who wanted to treat Isak and his grandpa to some food. Wait, so he's a radical too? No, he isn't. I just needed to tack on a random villager name to make the eavesdropper think that I was making some wild guesses based on my impressions. Wow! What a genius idea! Well, that's an expert mercenary for ya! Ah, you're too kind. It was straight from the usual playbook, if I'm honest. So, that thing you were saying before, is it really true? Hmm? About what? About how mercenaries only care about Mora, and that anyone's a friend as long as there's a profit. Does that bother you? What makes you so sure? Uh... Dia, do you dislike the Dendro Archon like the other desert folk? <laughs> you two are pretty sharp. No, I don't have anything against the Dendro Archon. I've heard a lot of nice things about the Lesser Lord from Dunyarzad. I can understand her devotion and gratitude. Dunyarzad's just an ordinary person. There's no way a god would be so involved in the lives of everyday people unless they were truly compassionate. I've begun to realize that the sages are behind everything that's happened recently. The radicals' blind belief in King Deshret, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy. <laughs> it's all the academia's trickery. But I see through it all. And unlike them, I can never be hostile towards anyone who's never done anything wrong. Dia. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village. This should be all of them. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I'll be in touch. Until then, please stand by. Candace, do you need any help? Candace will be okay on her own. I trust her, so you can too. She's been guarding Aru Village for quite some time now. If anyone is qualified to question the offenders, it's her. While I'm questioning them, why don't you pass some time by exploring the area? I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, Traveler. As for these idiots, let's just hope they live to see another day. On time. <laughs> we'll know any moment now. Paimon's been wondering. You seem to know Candace pretty well. Have you been friends for a long time? We've known each other for some time now. She's a pretty interesting person. Even though she's an extremely strong warrior, she never misuses her powers against others. Oh, Paimon knows.
knows what you mean. Like a lot of martial artists say, never take the fight outside the ring. Yep, I guess you can put it that way. It takes strong convictions to be as dedicated as she is and shoulder that kind of responsibility. Us mercs, on the other hand, we pretty much live from one day to the next. Well, Paimon thinks you're great, too. Really? Thanks for that. Oh, Sino's here! And he's pretty early, too! Yes. I was here yesterday to help out a little. To help out? By doing what? Sharing some interrogation techniques. Oh! Um, you mean you taught Candace some more... persuasive methods? Right. Come on in, everyone. Come on, let's go inside. Decide whether pyro slimes taste better with salt and pepper or garlic and herbs. You need to watch out for any signs of earthquakes and sandstorms. Time for a quick snack? I'll whip one up in no time! You need to watch out for any signs of earthquakes and sandstorms. <laughs> 